Today, on the Early Morning Show, ego sarcasm, a tactic women use to provoke men to violence. Let's cue the rooster and get this show started. Sarcasm, how women keep men in a cycle of violence. Sarcasm is a tool that some women wield like a knife through the heart of a man's defenses. Today's commentary is not simply about being provoked to anger, but more about how women have taken it to an all new high level over the past 50 years. Now before I go any further, there may be those of you who say that there is absolutely no reason for a man to be violent with a woman. I agree. Agree. But also, there is no need for a woman to provoke a man to violence, especially when most women don't carry this behavior with their girlfriends, their co-workers, the general public, and especially people who won't mind freaking out on them on a moment's notice. Then why would they do this to the person they claim to love, you would ask? Why would they do this? They do this because there is a sadistic payoff to this behavior. When a woman motivates a man to violence, it will be to have him physically lash out at her, So he can either be arrested, it will be that he loses his home, his car, his children, and most definitely his freedom, straight to prison. When I reference that fact that uh, she motivates him to violence, you might have noticed that I jumped clearly over saying she motivated him to anger. Her man, just like any other person, to include herself, would be angry when she engaged him in the argument. It is at this point that these women continue to berate their men by following them around all day long, arguing. That, my friend, is a person hell-bent on motivating another person to violence. In fact, she will not cease her torture until he acts out against her. She will stick to her tried-and-true negative and emasculating comments to enrage him so he will destroy himself. Guys who have went through this with this particular woman poking at their masculinity by calling them words like faggot to get their goat up. This word used in a negative way is to insult that he is less than a man. But if you see in a woman, the same woman in public, she wouldn't use this type of word. She would never use this word. In fact, she would be a, a public advocate for gay men and would admonish anyone who would dare use that same word, faggot, in that way. But this is the nature of a public face and a private persona anger provoker. There are many words and phrases that are in her vocabulary that she draws upon to debase him, provoking him to rage. Here are just a few beyond what I just gave you. You're stupid, she calls him in an effort not only to attack his education, but to refer to him as an immature male. A similar comment she gives him is that you are dumb. She uses uh, personal body damage in images to debase his character, like you smell, you stink, you have bad breath, you're ugly. You get the point? She tries to damage his self-esteem by telling him that no one wants him but her. Things like you have a small penis which is an attack again on his manhood. And finally, you are a short man, which refers to you have the height of a female. The trick of these particular women is to enrage men by calling them women. But why would a woman say this with one side of her mouth and talk out the other side of her mouth in public by saying that all things female are strong, powerful, competent, and sexy? I ask you. But adult men are not the only males that have to face this provoking wrath of these type women. For it is the young boys who have it worse. Little boys of mothers who do not respect men in general tell their sons the same. That they are stupid. They are dumb. That they won't amount to nothing or shit. That they are no good, just like their fathers, or in a ghetto, just like your daddy. 
Finally, that they can't wait until they are finally old enough to leave. Get out of the home. Now, my warning to any man who comes under a woman trying to belittle, demean, or aggravate him to violence, that you end the relationship immediately. Don't try to work it out. Don't try to pass gold. Don't try to collect $200. My mother used to tell me as a child that life is too short to have arguments. It's just too short. That woman never argued, raised her voice, or cursed over my entire lifetime. The woman didn't do it. If a woman tries to convince you that you are worthless and you know you have a value, why stay around until she successfully steals that worth and value and you are locked up for domestic violence or worse? At that time, your value will be what she said. Worthless. From something to nothing. So I caution you. A lot of times you get in these arguments with females who are trying to provoke you to violence, not anger. Most all of Adults and children are angry. Once you start arguing with them, they're angry. So she skips over anger straight to violence. And if you ever wonder why she follows you all day long, arguing, arguing, would you just shut up? Would you just stop? That's to provoke you to violence. Because you, my brother, are going to lose. If she says you're a loser, she's going to make sure she sees you as a loser. So tell us what you think. We'll be right back in just a moment without violence. It's 5 o'clock on a planet somewhere, and we're about to get our drink on. Welcome to the Man's Bartender. Today on the Man's Bartender, we're drinking Grand Marnier Margaritas. Mm. Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? And welcome to the man's bartender. Today, we're doing margaritas. Ooh, if you wanna go south for the winter, to the heat, it's margaritas. All right, so we're gonna need a couple ingredients to start this. We're gonna use some Jose Cuervo tequila. We're using some Grand Marnier. And that particular liquor you need to make a margarita, a good one. Okay, we're gonna, we already have our glasses. We have a traditional margarita glass. And we have what you would find on a beach when you want to go to South America, someplace like that. Say you killed somebody, and you're trying to get away because you need to get a margarita. That's the glass I have. Now we're going to need also lemon wedges. They're going to decorate the glass after we're finished. Uh, we're going to use a barrel shaker to shake the margarita in. So the ingredients, we're going to have fresh lemon juice, about an ounce of fresh lemon juice. So I can go ahead right now. And that lemon juice also has about one fourth cup of honey in it. So you need one fourth cup of honey to sweeten this. So if you have a problem getting the honey out of the honey uh, container, I just warm it up in a microwave a little bit and then it pours easily. The reason you want to mix that with the lemon juice, with about an ounce of lemon juice, because the honey, it will dilute better in the lemon juice than if you try to do the honey by itself. That way it won't freeze in the ice, because see, I just poured it in. All right, so that's in it. Now, to that, we want to pour about four ounces, okay, of the tequila. All right, so top is two. Two more is four. Mmm, tequila. Or as you say, tequila. Now, to that, we just want to pour about two ounces of the Grand Marnier. And whatever drips, that's just extra. That's extra good. All right, so we got that. Now to that, we're gonna need about a fourth a cup of water. Okay? Now the main thing that's good about any type recipe like this, when you're making mixed drinks, you're not really gonna get your friends drunk. You may get a buzz, but mixed drinks are not to get you drunk. So if you grew up in a family where they just drank straight from the bottle and it was always sauced, that was the reason. Mixed drinks have flavor to it, there's texture to it, there's everything to it, but you're not trying to get drunk. That's why you can space it over a period of a whole night, which is also when the cops pull you over and they wonder why you're drunk. You say, I had a drink. Was it a mixed drink or is it straight out the bottle? All right, so we go ahead and shake that up. It's about 45 seconds to a minute. 
And like I said, we got the two traditional glasses here. And we can go ahead now and put the lemon wedge on it. That's one. That one loves to fall. And there's two. And that one loves to fall too. So we can also put it inside if you want to. Okay? So you're trying to get classy with your friends? Put it inside. Up and down, up and down. By the man, by the man. Alright. So we're not just trying to dilute it all in water. But we do want to mix that honey up in there. We do want to mix that lemon up in there to make it infuse with the alcohol. Now the main thing about a barrel shaker, you want to shake the ice from one end to the other end so it mixes well. Okay? All right, so we're done. Now, we get the top off. I put in a traditional glass for you first. Now, you notice at the top, that's uh, rock salt. So the classic margarita has rock salt at the top. So what do you do? You take the glass, before you put the ice in there, you have two plates, one that has shallow water and one that has a rock salt or ice. I'm sorry. <laughs> or uh, uh, salt crystals. Now you dip it in the water first, and then you dip it in the salt, the rock salt, and now you have that around the rim. You see that? Classic margarita color. You remember the song about Margaritaville? Somebody gonna have some more than somebody else. I can tell you that right now. All right, and there you have it, friends. As always to you, salute. You get that, a little bit of that salt. Mmm, 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 mmm. So remember, go out and get it today. Jose Carbo, that's tequila. A lot of companies make it. I like this one, especially the Grand Marnier, okay? And that's sweeter. Those two mix together. You got the lemon juice. You got the honey with the water, shake with ice, rock salt around the top of the glass, and you're in South America. Stick with us. The cooking segment is coming up next. You're going to enjoy the day. We got a lot of good stuff planned for you. Yay, let's go out there and have some margaritas. See you soon. Mm. Mm -hmm. I hope to see you back next time on The Man's Bartender. Join me each week and we're going to be making some great drinks, some crazy drinks, and stuff that you can prepare for your friends at a party where it looks like you've been a bartender for a long time. Thank you for watching a minute. Today on The Man's Kitchen, we're making French toast with blueberries and strawberries. Come join us. Good morning, guys, and today we're making French toast. Come on, let's do it. All right, today what we're gonna do, we're gonna make some French toast. The first thing we wanna do is we need one egg. That's a brown egg. It could be white egg, doesn't make a difference. We're gonna need one fourth cup of milk. We're gonna need one half teaspoon of cinnamon, your choice. It doesn't matter. To that end, we we're going to use some uh, Sara Lee artesian bread. It's about the best one I know. There's flavor to bread, and when you want to make some nice French toast, you don't want some lame white bread, and make sure it's, it's thicker. It's not narrow bread. Okay, so we're going to mix those ingredients. Uh, the egg, the milk, the cinnamon, and about one half teaspoon also of vanilla extract. I've mixed those all together already, and that's what you see right here in this plate. And what you want to do, if you have a problem with that cinnamon binding to the egg and the milk, you could use a little bit of carnation, just a small teaspoon of that, and it makes everything bind together, and the flavor is pretty good too, especially if you use one with a different uh, flavor. So we're gonna top it when we finish with some fruit. Okay, in this case we're using some little 
blackberries and we use some strawberries. Some real butter. Okay, don't get that cheap junk. Real butter. And also some real maple syrup. Like you see me introduce it to you guys before. You can tell real maple syrup, it says real maple syrup, and it's usually in a glass, not a plastic. 100% pure from Canada. All right, we ready? So, just like if you were doing pancakes, the pan is on medium high. I've already got the pan oiled. Try to use an oil that's not burning. Use a canola oil, you can use an olive oil. So why I'm waiting for that to come around, I agitate this a little bit. Now make sure you take it out of a bowl and put it into a plate or well, something that will contain that without it uh, spilling over. You don't want to try to take a bowl and like I'll uh, just put that in the bowl. That's not gonna work. So when we put that in there, we just want to dip both sides. You're not trying to wash clothes, just dip both sides. And the next time we need, we're going to use a spatula, a broad spatula. We're going to use a little bit of coffee. Make sure you wake up with the morning show, right? Yep. That makes it taste better already. All right, it's about up to temp. So we go ahead and move that out of there. And the thing about whether you're doing French toast or pancakes, you want to always make sure that the pan's at the temperature or it's just going to be straight white on one side and more difficult for it to cook. Okay, it feels like it's about up to temp right now. Now, because I'm using four pieces, you want to thin this out. Dab. Dab. A little dry spot there. In this case, you don't even have to worry about the sides. It will absorb itself. Dab. 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 And there's just enough room for four of those pieces in that one particular pan. Last piece, dab. I don't have to mash it down, dab. There we are. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and Make sure, just like pancakes, if you like your pancakes darker, it's a higher heat. If you like them in the middle, a medium heat. So they're doing pretty good right now where they are. There's no need to play around with them. So what you're gonna do in a minute, we're gonna flip them over and let them go ahead and cook on that side. So we're trying to uh, cook the egg in the milk into the toast. We're not trying to fry eggs. So. This is not one of those eggs over dark. You can always test it. So I'm pulling it back just a little bit. Oops, starting to look pretty good. Now you can always rotate it just to be sure. Rotate it in the same direction that you put it in the pan uh, for doneness. So this is the first one I put in there, right? Take that one. Now. In life, a lot of things like that, hey, they don't want to cooperate, so you got to force them. You, you don't want to cooperate with me? All right, take like this. Okay. So those two are not bad. We give those two some more chance to cook. We're right back in just a minute. The magic of television, French toast. Don't go nowhere, we'll be right back. We're back, and through the magic of television, the toast is done. Okay. So French toast, look how it ends up. I like mine's light brown, nice butter right there. And I gave you guys also a version of darker brown. Now, I'm gonna top that with some fruit. If you ever went to any kind of restaurant, 
you would notice that they would top it with some kind of fruit. It just makes it taste better. You went the furthest mile. Especially, like I say, if you, you want the best tasting chicken, I suggest you go so free range. There. Free range chicken gets enough exercise, there. which keeps all levels of all levels within the chicken, and therefore, tough. they're less tough. Mm -hmm. we'll see you back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put it all on there. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just has to taste pretty good. Then we take the real, sir. Real butter, real syrup, real bread. That's good. So, one fourth cup of milk. One medium sized egg. Could be white or brown, doesn't make a difference. You got uh, one fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of uh, vanilla extract. Mix those together. If the cinnamon doesn't bind with the milk and the egg, use a little bit of carnation, uh, coffee powder. You can use a liquid form and any kind of flavor that enhances the flavor of the French toast. And there you have it, my friend. Taste of that. Make sure we get some fruit in that at the same time. There's nothing in the morning like real French toast. At the same time, you would waste getting a cold bowl of cereal. You could have some nice French toast. And if you like it crispy, you could have it crispy as well. Mmm. That is great. You can go forward in life with that, or like me, backwards. Assault on manhood. Our story today, a woman runs over her husband after an argument and kills him. In Upper Marlboro, Maryland, a Lanham woman has been sentenced to 10 years in prison with all but six suspended. So she got six years running her husband over with an SUV. Our Chelly Alvarez Mendoza, 30-year woman, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in connection with the incident, which took place in August of 2015 at the intersection of Seabrook Road and Washington Boulevard. Now, this woman was convict, convicted by a jury in July. Now, this is certainly a sad case as Miss Alvarez, Mendoza's children and grandchildren, will be without her for several years. However, I hope she takes this time to reflect on the gravity of her actions. And that's from the Prince George's County State's Attorney, Angela Osbrook. Not from me. Because in all these cases, these prosecutors, they say the same thing. How are you going to take time to reflect? You killed the dude. It's over. Now... There is no excuse for domestic violence, and I urge anyone who is in an abuse relationship to seek help before it's too late, because those who commit these acts will be held accountable. Now, prosecutors say Alvarez Mendoza and her husband, Fernando, were arguing in their Lanham home on August the 23rd when the victim left and started walking down Seabrook Road. So you imagine this couple's arguing in a house, and like men do, or supposed to do, he leaves the house. That wasn't enough. She got into her little small truck and followed him. So according to the witnesses, his wife began driving next to him in an SUV, and when he began to sprint across the street, she reportedly accelerated, struck him in the middle of the street, and continued pushing his body across the intersection, jumping a curb, and striking a tree. In that picture that you see, that's his dead body. Now, the woman attention ran over her husband in Atlanta, Maryland. She did. And it was on a Sunday. Now, the man who can, uh, you can see under the tire was pronounced dead on the scene. The suspect, his wife, uh, was 37 years old. And like I say, they got into an argument. But argument should not end this way. And a lot of you guys, if you ever watch our show Killer Wives, you see that either a grudge or an argument leads to something like this. It's not going to stop until you 
refuse to let it start by not engaging in a relationship with these women who hate men, but smiling outside and pretend that they do. So, imagine you're arguing with your wife in one minute, and the next minute you have a one-ton vehicle on your back. Now, she said she didn't mean to do it. But you can clearly see from the video, and if you go online, you can see a video. She chased him in an intersection, bumps him, and they show her taking him right across the street until she hit the tree. Now, if she didn't mean to do that, that's one hell of an accident. When she got into the yard, she said she tried to pull him from under the car, but she couldn't. Because you can see in the photo that the tire is on his chest. He's dead. A neighbor tried to use a car jack to lift the car off of him. But you can't, because if you're a guy, you know you can't put a car jack on soft soil. It'll just compact. Now, police arrived at the scene and found him unresponsive underneath the SUV. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Miss Mendoza herself was charged with first-degree murder and has admitted her involvement in her husband's death. Watch out, guys. If this is your problem, get out. We'll be back next week. But make sure that you take a look at this clip. Killer Wives coming up. Always at the end of these stories of Soto Manhood, we give you a preview of Killer Wives. Stay tuned. Here's your preview for Killer Wise, Episode 10. And now we bring you Killer Wise, Episode 10. And to free. These are the case facts against Lynn Turner, who poisoned her husband, her aunt, and her boyfriend. Isn't trust a bitch? Atlanta, Georgia. Residents of famed Elton John and Cardi B, but also famous for the death of Maurice Turner and Randy Thomas by one woman.
I care less about what you think of me and more about what I think of me. Abundance coming easily, I'm tapped into that frequency. What you think of me ain't none of my business. What you think of me ain't none of my. What I spark don't get you lit, so why you give a shit? Talking out your ass, we revoke your membership. Falling off the cliff, hope you niggas get a grip. It's enough to go around if you tune into the sounds. Tap into the universal laws to get it all. You already have it in you, but you hold it and you stall. We ain't gotta die to see heaven, we can live it. If you want something, gotta be willing to give it. Not for the return, purely for the feeling. Take some time to get a line of structures that we building. Expansion, we increase, cause we have to. Thank God every day, and your mama, cause she had you. She really didn't have to, you know.